Hey, trusty. Hey, so we're live and everybody's saying hi to Trusty. <laughs> so oh, hey swell. Trusty, how you doing? I'm doing swell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 19 of the Digital Bullpen. We're still getting the message. Hangouts on air is going away August 1st for quick streaming. Try YouTube webcam. But that's only if you're going to stream by yourself. And we're not doing that. We got people eating. We got people drawing. We got people enjoying themselves. Everything's going on. So once again, welcome to the Digital Bullpen. Hey, uh, and uh, today's guest uh, or panelist, we got Good Dog Press. We got Snowball Raccoon. And we got Trusty Sidekick. So how you doing, Good Dog? I'm doing great. I'm just 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 got home. Got to play with my dog for a little while. Now I get to hang out with the digital bullpen. Awesome. And and Skunk Girl uh, is going to be 62 pages now because I'm going to add two pages. I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I've always known that, but we still love you. Uh, you love me. Of course. I feel so, so wanted. <laughs> you are, man. You are. You know, at least your wife gets home. I'm so wanted. Uh, you know. Uh, well, who else do we have in this lovely panel there? Well, I leave it up to you to introduce the next person, Ooh, sir. I'm going to introduce the next person that was in the green room with us, ready to come on here. And he is part of Skunk Girl, too. He does have a backup story. You guys will start seeing some of his work very soon. Shinobi Raccoon. Hey. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. No, it's dead, Shinobi. You gotta talk about yourself, Shinobi. Build yourself up, Shinobi. What what are you doing? What are you what is your what is your character that everybody knows you by? Ah, uh, well, uh well, right now I have a drawing here of Cherry Blossom doing, doing ninja stuff. Cool. And if I can just now, if I can just find the drawing that sparked this whole that sparked this whole collaboration, I can show that. Awesome! 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 This has been working tirelessly behind the scenes, and it's going to be a manga style. Shinobi, uh, Bl Cherry Blossom, and Skunk, Skunk Girl. Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, and in between time, we got Ape Sapien and Justin Reekin. Uh, he's there out in the chat saying, hey, man, Justin Reekin, I, I get it, brother. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. He says he wants to jump on, but the wife the wife is calling him. Uh-oh. So he's, he's got to. Understandable. He's got to uh -oh. get some rest, and I ain't mad at the man. You know, he, he put out a nice little video today. Awesome. So, you know, I, I caught the, I didn't catch the live, but I did catch the replay. I was, I was kind of busy doing the cooking thing. You know, had a little, uh, lot of errands to run today, so I was everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Chicken man. So speaking of which. Okay. I, Go ahead, Shinobi. So yeah, this little. So yeah, um. Well, during the be during the beginning stages of, uh, Manny's uh skunk girl campaign, I decided to to uh to do what I do best when to do what I do whenever a new campaign that interests me comes up was basically in incorporate uh one of my character incorporate one of my Shinobi characters in with that character, and. My little, so I I decided to incorporate a photo of my of my uh, raccoon character with with skunk girl with skunk girls here, kind of in a uh, Harley Quinn poison ivy style <laughs> type uh, type moment here. Like they made a they made a friendship. They took a picture together, and here is probably that r the raccoon character holding the photo, and Manny and Manny approaches me. Manny sees it, he loves it, and he's like, "Hey, why don't you put? Why don't you uh, uh, do a short story featuring uh, featuring Cherry Blossom?" And I've been working on that since. Well, yeah, I mean, that's. I mean, I looked at it this way. I mean, hey, go go do a, a you know a short story about your Cherry Blossom and go 
introduce your in Scrum Girl. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, and we, just go ahead. Like I said that's why when he finally does his uh, Indiegogo or something like that, or wherever he wants to do it, a web comic or whatever, he got he got backups. Like, hey, my character appeared first. You know, here, here where you can find her. You know, gives it a little bit more. You know, credibility. Yeah. Right. And. Um, she's actually made several appearances throughout the throughout the interval webs and gone through many changes. And there you go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. So, uh, <laughs> just to recap, his comic says hashtag Skunk Girl, and he wants to work magic. What kind of magic you trying to Ooh. work there, brother? Hmm. What kind of magic you trying to work? I'm trying to figure this out. I, I need to figure out when I can get onto Jesse Rican and his comics. Hey, hey, you know, that the thing is, is it's gonna have to be on a weekend, bro, because yeah, he goes to sleep around this time and yeah. he's in Florida, you're in Hawaii, so it's gonna have to be on a weekend sometime. I don't know, we'll, we'll, right. make it happen. we'll try to make it happen. Yeah. I need to, I need to reach out more. That's what I didn't do in the first half of this, uh, this, uh, what you call it. This campaign because I knew it was gonna be a marathon, but I'm gonna reach right, out more on the second half. We got him, we got Perry Comics, uh we got comic book jabroni. They're they're all wanting to talk, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're all wanting to talk, they're all wanting to showcase, you know, and 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 you know, and they're doing well. The channels are growing, like all three of yeah. them already hit the 700 club mark. That's nice. it's crazy, man. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I love uh, Edwin's um, new comic book day videos. They're a lot of fun seeing what he picked up. Interesting. And he's he's got you know he's got such a good personality uh, on camera too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who was that awesome voice that we just heard? That was trusty sidekick of us. Hmm. He didn't get introduced, man. He got introduced first because everybody was saying, I trust you as I went live. I was like, hey, we're about to go live. Trusty, trusty, yeah. trusty, trusty. <laughs> and everybody, all anybody heard when we went live was Trusty's name a million times. Oh, trusty. Well, Trusty had just got on and we were making him feel welcome. That's it. That was it. Because I was late. No, Trusty's good. I was talking with Mrs. Sidekick. Oh. That, that's important. Yep. yep. Anyway, Trusty, how you doing, bud? Greetings, true believers. <laughs> I love it. Not bad, <laughs> you know. <laughs> all things considered, he he does many voices. The man of many voices. Yes. And and one, one many voices. He's gonna do, do one voice, and everybody's gonna be shocked and go, "Oh my lord, is that guy on there?" <laughs> no. Right. Speaking of uh, speaking <laughs> of many voices, uh, how did that how did that thing go, Trusty? Oh, I I never heard anything back from it. It was uh, I had taken a voice acting class in the fall. And um, my teacher had an audition for me, uh, told me what they were looking for, gave me something to read. You know, I did. Made s several attempts at it, sent the best one to her. I haven't heard anything back, so I'm sure that meant they picked somebody else. Possibly. Oh, don't call us. We'll call you. Exactly. It's not the way it always is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yep, yep. Hey. <laughs> Con hey, Justin Rica says, wow, that sounds just like Lee. Someone said Excelsior, Comic Book Bob. Oh, shoot, Comic Book Bob, yo. Uh, you want the link, brother? Are you drawing tonight or are you just chilling in the cut? Hey, comic Book Bob is an awesome artist. That's what I'm saying. Does is he does he want the link? Is he uh because you know he'll be he's he's been on the show before, right? Very laid back dude, great art, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, Trusty is like that one Full House character who who is who does voices the voices of every cartoon known oh, to man. man at that time. Not Dave Goulet. Dave Goulet, that was his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, hold on. He says send it, so send I will. It. I will uh -oh. send it. Yeah, I like Comic Book Bob. Sometimes he gets a little, he gets a little excitable, but we'll, no. we we will bring him on because you know, hey. Nobody, nobody can get as excited as Josh Chris. Come on now. Josh Chris should be. I, I send him the link too. <laughs> and I don't know where he's at. That's a joke, people. 
I was gonna say <laughs> that's a big joke. He's he's very, very if we're talking excitable. I'd say maybe tank, you know. Oh damn. Well tank just robots out. Yeah. <laughs> tank robots. Robots is robot out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it is music. You <laughs> I never did like that song, Trusty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, All the great songs that Styx has. That was a horrible song. <laughs> hey, Justin Rica says, yeah. I use Steamyard Hangouts OS going out soon. Yeah, I saw his I saw his uh his video today, and he had he had everybody that was on a panel on a separate block on his on his channel. And uh, and it was awesome because then you could see what everybody's working on, or you could see everybody's face in in its own little big old uh, its own little section. It's pretty cool. Let's see, Steam Yard. I can send you an invite, and we can work some magic. Hey, man, anytime you want to do a collab, brother, and you want to bring some of my peoples on and talk about works and comics and independence, bro, let me know. Let me know. And uh, and then we'll work it all out, brother. You know, I'm I'm dying to bridge these two communities over, man. I've been it's kind of like one of my things that I want to do while I while I work on YouTube is bridge 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 the collectors with the artists, you know, and, and bring a little more spotlight to uh, to the underground slash in the comics movement. That that is something that I really 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 want to get going, you know. And, and it's good for people like. Uh, like a Manny, and of course, you know, the raccoon is gonna do something soon. Trusty sidekick who's working on my character and he's looking spiff. Oh, I love it. You like that? Yeah, yes. I got your your sketches over here just off off camera. Yeah, please don't show anybody those sketches. Those are terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it worth you to you? Uh, no, it doesn't Ooh. matter, man. It, I, I posted them on Twitter before, so it's not a big deal. I know they're terrible, but it's all good. It's I'm all pulling, good. I've pulled some details from it though. Yeah, that was that was uh you know, you know, I, I it, it was an attempt. It was an attempt. Uh Justin Regan says, trusty Rod. All right, Ross says, me, you, and two others. All right, so I will I will if 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 it's all possible, if it's all possible to get me. Uh, Good Dog Press, who has a book out, and El Guapo, who has a book out, on the stream together. That would be the ideal uh, starting right. off point. Just to, uh, just Rod, that would be that would be awesome. That would be awesome. And then of course we can bring in artists and whatnot uh, as we go along, and maybe other guys that have books out that you know you guys might be interested in. But it'd be really cool if we can get Good Dog or Manny and El Guapo. Since they both, yeah, Cesar, exactly. Uh, it, it, since they both have books out, and it would be really, really nice right. for the communities to check them yeah. out. Uh, that would, might be good too. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, and of course, we got uh, Shinobi Raccoon, who's who's going to be part of uh, of the uh, Skunk Girl. He's going to have a small uh, story in the book itself. So, you know, we got people here. You know, See, that's looking pretty doggone nice. <laughs> it looks better. It looks like the one I drew, but like a hundred times better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Good. I'm loving it. Yeah, that's what matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we going Trying back to, to Shinobi, who's most satisfied. Oh man, well satisfied. you know, you know me. I'm I'm an easy guy, man. I, I I'm I'm easy going. So. <laughs> Uh, you should stop using that phrase because of what EVS said the other day. They're just a reeking what? What phrase? What? I hate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, oh, what phrase? No. I'm still blocked by you. No, he says Cesar because yeah. it's it's is uh Cesar is is El Guapo Comics um uh, birth name, government name. So so that's why he said that. Kronos, uh, Nerdets Ner Nerdets Newsstand. Hey. Nay, we have a celebrity in the chat. She got my message. Yes, yeah, she did. I told you, uh, Shinobi has been working. At work just work. Has been working in the background to get us some uh, some more viewers. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I ain't even mad at it. So welcome, 
uh, Nerdez Newsstand. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we do enjoy your videos as well, so we we are fans of your show. We watch them. Um, she, uh, Whenever I uh, whenever I post something on Facebook or uh, I mean why did I say Facebook uh, Twitter or uh, or um, Instagram she always I she always has like the cutest responses. No no she's she's uh she's a good person. Her last video was of course yeah, touching on the topic of of what's going on in in the in the CG community. I think yeah. a, I think her take was pretty doggone good. And spot on. So you know, kudos to you. I love the video. And comic book Bob has joined the panel. How you doing, comic book? How you doing, guys? How you doing tonight? Good, man. What's going on in your life? I'm uh, just taking it easy, man. <laughs> you know how it is. Tired, bro. This is a heavy day of streaming for me, man. Yeah, well, you know, I, I I know that you do a lot of streams. I I didn't want to feel I didn't want to make you feel like you were pressured. You know, no, dude, I like coming in here. It, uh, I like I like the atmosphere, man. It's it's very laid back, especially with things going on today. So yeah, we're we're, uh, we're like we're therapeutical, bro. Like this stream is therapy, man. It is just art and guys talking, you know, and 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 um yeah. and it might be uh. Shinobi has another friend, Len Lenore, Lost Lenore Art or something like that. Yes. I've heard her. Yeah, I've heard yeah. of her. She's pretty cool. Yeah. Me too. And and uh, she also has a she also has an art book on Indiegogo. Yeah, so we're gonna go check her out and hopefully uh if she checks out the show, we can invite her to uh, come stream with us one day, man. I, I checked That'd out her awesome. videos and uh she's pretty cool. So you know, so you know us. We're we're open to anybody that likes to draw and chill. You know, if you if you like to show off artwork and chill, and uh, you know, then then I'm down. I'm down for bringing you on and all that good stuff, man. Like I said, we're like therapy, man. You had a rough day. <laughs> yeah. Over here, man. I might put you to sleep, not yeah. on purpose, but we kind of, we are that laid back. Yeah. And and uh, as I was as I was uh. Getting as I was bringing during a uh, cherry's evolution, I kind of put bits of of uh, I kind of put bits of Lenore into the character. Oh, nice! I bet uh, I bet she's feeling a little flattered about that. I wouldn't be mad. I'm the art man. Out, I'm gamer and hobby gamer dev. Not nah, Chronos man. You you're not the art man. Nah, you're my you're my uh, technology source of information and wealth of information, brother. Shoot, <laughs> Chronos be out there putting up some good videos too, as well. If you haven't, uh, you know, if you haven't checked them out, Tech Ferret saying hi to the bullpen, he's out there in the, up, in the chat checking us out. Hey, tank, 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 tank. Let's tank. check out what comic book Bob is drawing. Oh, it's kind of lighted, he's like boxing. Oh, that is a beautiful skunk girl in progress. Yeah, I've been nice. spending way too long on this. Okay. I need to get this thing done. Oh, I'm oh, start it done. Take your time. I don't know, but, but it, it's looking good. You know, they say you can't rush perfection. Yeah, I should have started with the I, I normally start with the face, man. And since I didn't, I'm like stressing over it. I gotta figure out how to get down there without putting too much blue line down. But and I'm gonna I'm trying to figure out a background to do here. I think I'm gonna do kind of like a like her jumping yeah, down the side of a building, like a cityscape going sideways here. Right, right. Something like that. Oh, that looks cool. You can always do clouds and make it easy on yourself. Nah, yeah. <laughs> nah. We don't want we don't want comic book Bob to take the easy road, man. Yeah, I gotta gotta stretch, we gotta must, grow, we, man. He must challenge himself. He must. The only way to grow is to challenge oneself. Yeah, but uh, there no, I, I I do like how the fur came out though. I think uh, I like that pattern. I think it worked well. It does. It looks really good, man. I like uh, I, I, I like uh, the bust to waist ratio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got to make them uh, got to make them look good, man. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good ratio. Uh, looks like she's very fit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Healthy. Mm -hmm. Healthy. Yeah. She's a well, she's a she's a criminal and she's got to run a lot. So I figured she's uh she's gonna be she's gonna be fit. Yeah. Well, fit helps, you know. Fit helps, um, you know. It's it's believable, you know. Yep. It's believable. You don't have to look like a like, you know, like a super duper athlete, but you got to at least look somewhat the part. You know what I'm saying? Well, yes, sure. 
she is definitely not uh, fit. She, she's, <laughs> not, I mean, she's not, she's not going to have, you know, over musculature, that's for sure. You know, she's supposed to be like a very statuous model kind of deal. So. Kind of pampered. Well, there we go. Just, well, uh... She does have a booster, boys. So she does get pampered every day. But she keeps she keeps herself fit, that's for sure. Yeah. But oh, you have me. to, you know, you, when you live in a uh oh. <laughs> uh, CCA Aminos. Uh, yeah. you're working it's out? A, this stream is brought to you by Rain. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, that's a that's a post workout uh, supplement there, man. I hope you're putting um, in the, the effort. That's a that's actually that's a pre workout. Well, it's got the BCAA and the amino acids. I actually yeah. drink BC. Yeah. Well, when I when I used to drink it, I used to drink them during the middle of my workouts. Yeah. Well, do, after this stream, I'm probably gonna go to the gym, but uh, I'm drinking it right now mostly because it's got 300 milligrams of caffeine in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I didn't do the caffeines. I just did the BCAAs on their own. Yeah. yeah. Normally, I use a I use a, a pre workout, but. I'm Bro, your hands that. are gonna be jittery as heck if you're drinking that. <laughs> trying to draw. I'm just gonna let you know right now, your lines are gonna start. Your lines may look a little shaky. You might not want to work on that face. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll work on the tail a little bit. Uh, right. What I was about to suggest: work on the fur part where the jittery, where the jittery hands might actually make it look like fur. <laughs> <laughs> That's my suggestion. You could do whatever yeah. you want to. It is your drawing. Well, gotta gotta get gotta be down fifty more pounds by Christmas, man. Dude, I, I wish I, I need to get down fifty pounds myself. Shoot. Yep. But uh, I uh, some of uh, some of the other creators, we kind of uh, started doing a little raw uh, raw, you know, support challenge each other to try to push it a little bit because uh, I think we've all been eating a little more, little too much pie. That Have happens. you been? Yeah, especially when you're hanging out at. Especially when you're hanging with Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually um, my my mom, and my dad, my mom, my sister are like amazing bakers, and we have um we have a huge garden with like uh, like uh, berry bushes and stuff. And uh, I was actually thinking about uh, making a homemade blueberry pie and sending it to him, just because I was like, okay, now I want to watch you watch. I want to watch you eat this live, and just be like, oh, God. oh I can't stop. <laughs> Ethan only pie. Eating it with his toe thumbs. No. Uh, <laughs> Sticky Art Channel says digital is almost set up. I need one cable. One cable, man. One cable will bring the house down for sure. For sure. You know, oh and God. those of you that are new to the channel that you're coming in for the first time today, please, you know, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. We greatly appreciate it. All your support is always yep. appreciated. And um, again, thank you all for Thank you all for showing up at, uh, you know, in this wonderful evening, knowing that there's a lot going on. We appreciate you. Also, oh. don't forget to ch don't forget that uh, I have cards up. If you go to the little icon on the top right where it says where the little information icon, all the channel the channels for the people that are in this panel, except for Comic Book Bob, because I don't know he was gonna be here, are there. You click it, boom, it'll show you everybody's uh, YouTube channel. You can go there and sub to them as well. It has uh, Shinobi Raccoons, El Guapo Comics, it has Good Thought Press, Josh Chris Arts, uh, and it also has a playlist of the digital bullpen. We have 19 episodes as of today. Cool. You can go back and check out everything that we've been doing. And uh, so, yeah, that's that. That was a uh, public service announcement. announcement. Yeah, yeah, we're on Twitter. Um, so uh, Good Thought Press is Good Thought Press on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, uh, Colorblind E on Twitter. And uh, Trusty Psychic Three is on Twitter. I believe that's your Twitter, Trusty. That is it. Yeah. And um, Shinobi Raccoon, yours is what on Twitter? Shinobi Raccoon. Shinobi Raccoon <laughs> on Twitter. There you go. And we're easy to find, man. We're easy to find. Gotta start multi-streaming this, man. Start putting on uh, Twitch and uh, other other platforms. <laughs> but you know what? I, I was doing that at first when it was just me and Josh. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of. Working to figure out how to uh, do that. Just restream I, IO. That's it. Yeah, I got. I just got that set up. And I started doing a game. Uh, a game stream on that last night. Yeah, just restream IO. But it's better than when I first started because it now integrates all the chats of all the different platforms into one main chat. 
where you uh -huh. can just keep an eye on it. Before I had to have everything, all the windows open to see who was chatting where. You know, yeah, that, that definitely helps out a lot. It, and that's why I stopped doing it. But all you have to do is go to um, Restream IO, mm -hmm. set up an account, put up all, put up your YouTube your, and your Twitch information, your stream keys, boom. And Restream IO, you say? Restream IO. Or yep. Restream IO. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, when you set it up, there is a uh, section for you to, you can either download it, you can download it onto your, your PC or you can just run it to your phone where it uh, it's the uh, Restream chat. And it, you, it, you, you just uh, give it the information and it'll, it'll integrate all of your different platforms into one chat. Yeah, that didn't happen before. That was something that wasn't there before, which is nice yeah. now. Yeah, I definitely think that will help. Oh, that helps a whole bunch, brother, because because we did it. Uh, Josh and I did it at first because we wanted to be – we just wanted to be everywhere. I mean, no, Twitch. No, no. Uh, we, we were doing uh, multi-streaming to – to uh, YouTube and Twitch and Mixer because it, it allows you to re uh, mm -hmm. stream to Mixer as well, which is the yeah. Microsoft app. Dude, um, they, they've got it to the point now where you can stream to 16 different things if you wanted to. If you're yeah. but awesome. If, if you get the paid version, you can also re stream to Facebook, but on the free version, you can't. Yeah, but uh, I just got it set up to do uh, YouTube, Twitch, and uh, D Live right now. Awesome. And I gotta figure out D Live because that whole thing's based around cryptocurrency. <laughs> I don't know but, anything about that, but I would definitely have to check it out. It's a it's a learning curve, man. I'm like, I don't know what any of this stuff is. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now I know how uh, Richard C. Meyer felt when he first got his YouTube channel started. <laughs> man, I'm gonna tell you. But I just anything and everything to try to build up those subs, man. Yep. But the but thing I is. I just uh, want to start doing some more community stuff, you know? Like, we were talking about doing yeah. some kind of, like, a, a community gaming thing. Yeah. I think it just, uh, okay. I think it would be fun. How am I going to do this? <laughs> Whatever you do, just easy with the caffeine. Let me uh, see what Shinobi's I'm, I'm, doing. Let me I'm pop it, it on Shinobi real quick. He's over there doing some work. Holding it loose. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta do that. So I watched a nice um, stream uh, earlier, first episode of The Artist Table with uh, Brad, Pencil for Life, um, uh -oh. Josh Stevens, and Willie Reed. Cool. Uh-oh, cool. Speaking of uh, guests, we have the one, the only, the amazing Copic artist, Josh Chris Arts. How you doing, Yay. buddy? That's a lot of words to put in front of me. I know, I, I, you know, you know. I tend to embellish a little bit just because, you know. Uh, why, why not just embellish a tiny bit and, uh, you know, and give everybody hyped up and then show them, boom, show them that beautiful skunk girl you're working on. <laughs> I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. How was your day, buddy? Oh, you know, another day and another quarter. Sure. Yeah, we were just talking about when you and I were doing the. Uh, Trying to doing the multi streams with Restream IO when we we're streaming Twitch and YouTube when we first started out. Yeah, I mean, it's still something that's in the back of my mind to keep doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was telling that at that time, though, that there was no way to consolidate all the chats and I had too many windows open. But now they've done it, they've done it where you can consolidate all the chats into one, you know, into one chat. So now it's, it'll be easier to keep track of everything. Well, not that I have a, I have any subs on Twitch because I don't. Just Josh. <laughs> you got, you got, you got, let's see. Everybody starts with zero, man. Yes. But you know, like I said, um, that that thing would allow you to stream everywhere, like Mixer and Twitch, and you know. So it, it's 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 worth it, you know. If you if you're gonna do it, I think it, it's it's good, and it does take. Uh, it's good because the the you don't all the, the you stream to IO, and then IO takes care of streaming to the other platforms. So you're mm -hmm. not you're not killing your bandwidth trying to shoot it to different platforms from your computer. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. So that's that's a good part about it. If I Hopefully. remember correctly, that's yeah. how it works. One thing I would say though is definitely the, check your um, whatever software you're using to do your streams. 
um, yeah, check, your, check your check your bandwidth le levels because I don't know if it you just when uh, when you're on a low level Twitch account if you're not an affiliate or not, but they uh, they have a limit on the bot rate uh, on how yeah on your, your on your bit rate so because uh, I uh, when I did my, when I tried my first stream it wouldn't let me because it said my bit rate was too high I think the limit is like six thousand yeah. I think I think if you become an affiliate, that's when they open it up and they let you do whatever you want. Because there's people on there that, that are streaming 4K. So I can't even imagine doing that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's on the video card, man. It's on the Shoot. video card. Basically, that's on the equipment you have. Mm. That's a system and a half. You know, that's on the equipment you have. This series was made possible by for, by viewers like you. Yeah. Feel free to go to my various uh, uh, locations to donate for as little as a dollar a month. Yeah, but it's good, man. You know, if if you can master it, it's awesome. Oh, we were sure. playing. We were playing with it, and like I said, Josh and I were playing with it at the beginning, and um, then I kind of just stopped. And then, um, now everybody's bringing it back up. So, yeah, I've been. That is one thing that you're right, man. It is a learning curve because uh, I've been. That's so all I've been doing is watching freaking videos on how to set everything up. So, yeah. It's like yeah. watching. It's like reading stereo instructions. It gets there, man. But like I said, you can do it. You know, it can be done. Oh, that's where my break is. Hey, uh, did I put that link in uh, to those uh, that guy that had that brush uh, pack for sale for you? Uh, e? uh, uh, I don't think I got um, that. There's a there's an inker I, re I, I really like. I follow him, he's a pretty cool dude. His name's uh, Jimmy Reyes, uh -huh. and uh. He was doing uh these, these inking tutorial and he was uh he's normally a traditional guy. He's uh he's one of Dave Finch's inkers. Right. And uh he was doing these um vid uh these video tutorials for uh, inking digitally and he was using a an ink uh a brush set from a guy named Robert Marzullo and he had it it's like it's it cost like five bucks. But uh some of the, the brushes he was using are freaking cool, man. And uh, Jimmy's like, you know, he's like, I'm a traditional inker. I don't usually, you know, I don't usually, I don't, I don't usually do digital. But he's trying to, he's trying to improve his tool set. Mm -hmm. but he went and got those brushes, and he was doing a demo of them. And some of those brushes are really cool. I have to check it out, man. Yeah, uh, but check out, yeah, check out J uh, Jimmy Reyes. Mm -hmm. uh, his inking, just like he does a lot of like inking tutorials and stuff. He just the way he breaks them down is really, really cool. Oh. But I thought I, I thought I threw that link up there for you. You might have, because uh, I think I went and checked it out. It was a pro, uh, for Procreate. Um, the 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 pack is for multiple different things, but Procreate's one of them. Right. Yeah. yeah I, think, I, uh, think I, I think I did get that then. Yeah, because there's a because he was actually use, uh, using it in um, um, Clip Studio. Yeah, Clip Studio is my. I'm just still upset about that whole. You know, I own Clip Studio, but because iOS and Windows, I have to buy a subscription for Clip Studio to use on the iPad. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I'm, I'm not. I'm not happy with that. That's kind of messed up. Yeah, because I mean, you can use it. You can use Clip Studio, but you know, you can't save. You can't open. Uh, you know, I have to uh, trans. I have to. What I have to do is whatever I want to draw on the iPad. I have, to, oh, I have to save it on okay. my Clip Studio and then put it on the cloud, download it on the iPad, and then I can't save it because it's not it's not a verified, you know, it's not a, a subscription copy. So I have to take a screenshot of whatever I draw on the iPad <laughs> once I'm done with it. it, it, it it's, it's, it's a pain in the buttocks, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's cool that, that you have to do that. And... Um, you know, because I bought the EX, right? Um, so I pay, I paid a I paid a I mean I bought it on sale, but it's still a pretty penny. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, dude, you know, I, it's not like I bought your your you know your lowest base product. You know, I put some money in here because 
I was thinking that this is going to be a long-term thing. And, um, and now you hit me with this. And the thing is, that inking on the iPad Pro with Clip Studio is amazing, dude. I've seen, yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen some people doing some really cool stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, they, there's a, they've got tools on there so you can like throw in a perspective grid to help right. you uh, set your stuff up. It's just like, yeah. just, it's just like zip, 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 done. I'm like, wow. Yeah, dude. Like the fact that you can, uh, Rebel Comics is in the house. Is that the Copic kid? Yes, it is. That is Josh Chris Hart, and he's doing uh, a commission for Mr. Manny Correa, a.k.a. Manny the Bell, a.k.a. the Hawaiian Tsunami, a.k.a. Good God Press. I'm tired. I'm running out of a.k.a.s, but that is Jeez. Josh. Jeez, that's, <laughs> that's for a.k.a.s and Method Man. Look, man, you forget the man. A.k.a. the Skunk Father. Yeah, a.k.a. the Skunk Father. Skunk Father. Speaking of uh, Method Man, did you guys see that uh, little clip with them in that new Jane Silent Bob reboot? No, I did not. So met, met, with uh, Method Man and Red Man? No. I'm like, oh my God, where the hell have you guys been? <laughs> <coughs> now, you know, I haven't paid attention to that uh, Silent Bob. I mean, the reboot for Silent Bob and what's, yeah. what's his name again? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah. Yeah. I just um, we were talking about trailers today, and uh, we were flipping through, and I was like, oh my god, they made a remake of this. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, Chronos. Yeah, I saw that, but that software is Windows only. Uh, it wasn't for the iPad, from what I could tell. Uh, no, Chronos sent me a video where this guy is using. Um, a software for Windows that's that's free, that um, that is really good as well. Like, really amazing. Problem is that it's it's a tablet. It's a um, tablet Pro. That's the name of it. Tablet Pro. Ah. And uh, it's good, but from what I can tell, um, Windows PC only. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't see a version for the iPad. I didn't see a version for the iPad. You see the camera? Yeah. So the bench should be solved. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see anything for iPad. And that's what I like. I like the iPad because I could take that with me anywhere. And and if I just want to ink, you know, on the go, it's freaking amazing, man. Like I said, the the workflow on the iPad because of the of the uh, touch screen where you could use you know two finger taps to undo, three finger taps to redo. And then of course, if you have your two fingers on it, you can flip the drawing back and forth, you know, right. and, and just keep keep inking without losing without missing a step man it's it's i'm telling you the workflow for inking on the ipad pro is it's pretty doggone good I, i'm not gonna lie i was impressed I, yeah there's a lot of really good programs man unfortunately you that's you said you, a lot of them you run into that proprietary software thing yeah uh, so uh you know yeah <laughs> It happens, you know, but there's a lot of good stuff. And I say Clip Studio on, on the iPad is freaking, it's crazy, man. I, like, <laughs> uh, Providence they also show another video I saw the Apple are losing market this year to Android, which is a hybrid Linux. Yeah. So, yeah, bro, it's it's crazy. Uh, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I love, I love inking on the iPad Pro now. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people uh, jumping over to those. Uh, uh, the, I mean, uh, the uh, the iPad just being uh, tooled for art. Yep. But then again, I, I remember all the way back in uh, when I was uh, going to school that uh, a lot of uh, artists, uh, especially like three D artists and whatnot, they just they 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 preferred working on Macs on the on Apple uh, OS. Yeah. Well, back in the days, that was that was the the market the the market audience. You know, for yeah. Apple was a uh, artist and creative. Uh, creative yeah, because when I went, yeah, because when I went to school, everything was on a Mac. Yep. That's why we. Um, I actually learned how to do uh, texturing when I went to school for that uh, stuff. That's they 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 were exclusively on on uh, on Macs. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and I ran Linux stuff, uh, Linux stuff before. Like Ubuntu had a uh, had its own version 
of uh, artist Ubuntu. I think it was called Ubuntu Studio. Oh, Ubuntu, all, Ubuntu, yeah. Yeah. So I ran, I ran that as well. And I, I kind of do a PC most of the time, and, and you know because gaming computer and yep, it runs, uh, it runs the software so much. So you know it runs the software pretty good. A gaming PC, it's like, and then of course you can game on it. <laughs> You're not working. <laughs> I mean, how, how can you be mad? How can you be mad at that? Right. You know, you're not working on it. You can game. Yeah. You do uh, you just uh, exclusively uh, PC gaming? No, I do the Xbox. Xbox? Uh, console, yeah. I got a One X. Yeah. But now that now with this new, um, the new thing that Xbox is doing with their Xbox Live and you're able to uh, cross-platform it so you can play your Xbox games on PC. Oh, that's right. cool. So yeah. So now you know uh, if you if you own the game on Xbox and it's also PC compatible, you just put your Microsoft account in and pick up where you left off. So you know, Microsoft does some good things, but now everybody's doing cloud gaming. So eventually, everybody's gonna catch up. Yeah. You know, everybody's gonna catch up and be able to do some of that stuff, which is pretty cool. I don't, I, you know, you know, power to the people. Whatever, you, whatever people like. Hey. Yes. The, let let the let, market speak. Let them do what they do. Who am I? I'm not gonna choose your gaming platform for you. Nope. I'm not going to do that. Crickets. Now, if, I'm trying to read the, the chat. <laughs> Kronos is, is going on about Windows 10 and Windows migration. And then another 10, 100 million Americans thinks that cloud hosting got hacked uh, and collect your 125 bucks settlement. <laughs> Man, look. <coughs> this cloud thing is a joke to me. <laughs> I, I love how people keep trying to sell this cloud. But anyway, I what digress. Is, what is the cloud? I, I've had, I had when I was doing tech support, I had people ask me that. I was like, nobody really knows. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just people making more money. That's all. Yeah. More money, more problems. And that's all that is. Yeah. Ain't that right, Puffy? <laughs> Okay, let's see. If it, it did, if you have any dealings with Equifax, you can get a settlement of 125 bucks. Probably lost more than that on the breach. What was there? Actually, uh, was there another breach or? I don't know, man. I don't pay attention anymore. Yeah, um, Capital cap, Capital One got breached jeez oh joy what's in your wallet not much anymore not anymore yeah, yeah nothing i got got yeah i mean those breaches happen so often yeah there's uh that's the thing man is there there are some the more the tougher they make it is to crack those things man there are some black hat hackers out there that specifically live to break that stuff yeah they, they take that as a challenge right and, uh, and not to mention you got insider can hack well. anything but no, but you know some of that is hackers and some of that is also insiders mm -hmm. possibly you know and and people that that uh that want to make that quick buck and they're like hey you know i got access if you want it right it, it might not even start like that man it just they just get recruited man they're like oh mm-hmm you know they get profiled, they get recruited. They're like, huh? This dude, this dude is looking like life sucks for him or her. Let's see what I can do about you know, you know, social engineering. She's like a recruit. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> so, did anybody else notice that Slick Jimmy snuck in here? No, I didn't notice that, man. Oh, 
Hey, Slick. Hey, who? Hey, Slick. What are you talking about? Slick. <laughs> See, look, Kronos is saying this. 99.999% of these hacks are that way. This was a person inside, and she got busted. There you go. So, but, you know, and people think that, you know, it's it's not I think, man. If someone wants to get in, they're going to watch the, They're going to watch your work. They're going to watch your employees. They're going to start, yeah. you know, looking for patterns. They're going to look for that dude that's mad or upset, disgusted, yeah. broke, can't pay the bills because the job ain't doing it, or they mismanaged their money. And boom. Yeah. Next thing you know, you got someone recruited. Like, and, hey, uh, we gotta wait for you to get out uh from underneath there. Just uh yeah. What are those That's, what are those codes? Yeah. Yeah. Josh's skunk girl's coming out nice. Yeah, no, man. Look at them ties. Slick Jimmy, what's going on, bud? You quiet, you here, you quiet. I've got the fan on. I don't want to bother you guys with that. <laughs> Shit. Oh, okay. Understandable. Cool, cool, cool. You're supposed to be going live tonight, right? No, tomorrow night. Tomorrow. It's the last day. Oh, yeah, last yeah, day yeah. of hangouts. Not the last day of hangouts. Tomorrow. Well, uh, of like, you know, hooking, hooking up with, with YouTube, it is. Yeah. They're, the, breaking, uh, they're breaking up and shit. Sad day. Is yeah. it tomorrow or October first? No, August first. Tomorrow, yeah. August first. August first. Yeah. The uh, the software is going away. Yeah, but just to reek and say he he's got an, he was showing something. No, Pope Fire, we ain't showing Trusty right now. Trusty's working on something that is not what you need to see. But uh, <laughs> Josh is doing a beautiful. Coloring on Copix and man, you know that that's always worth it. That's always worth a good look. You know the guy is amazing. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you talk too highly about this man. <laughs> well, you know, I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to diss my my partner. Apparently. I can't diss my partner. You know? That wouldn't be cool. Because if I do, no, it wouldn't. if I do, then I got to hear it from my friends. Like, why'd you do the jars like that, man? You forgot I, who you were, man. Yeah. You forgot you where think, you came from. You think you're famous now? <laughs> Treating Josh like dirt? Wow. I get it all the time now, shoot. <laughs> you sell You sell out. You ain't who you used to be, man. Yeah, that's what I get it all the time, even though even though I got the smallest YouTube channel in the world. Uh I beg to differ, sir. You know? I, I have the smallest YouTube channel in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tux Racer Day. Talk amongst yourself. I'm playing Goat Burger a bit, says Kronos. Yeah, nah, you know, it it'll grow. Everything grows, man. Oh, it yeah. takes time, you know. Oh, I just dude, it's I remember when I had five subs. Okay. That's it keeps you humble, man. Yeah, well, you know, always be grateful. Uh yep. and all that good stuff. And then uh maybe we can get you on Rod's channel. <laughs> and uh, you know, because Rod loves to uh loves to give shout outs, bro. Man, he's good, man. What the hell, Lee? Will you respect the Copic kid? Says Ricey Lee. See? I gotta respect the Copic kick, or Rice Lee will get mad at me too. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And that's why I can't say nothing bad about Josh. Like he gets mad at me from saying good stuff about him, but if I don't, people people jump me, man. It's throw, tough. Throw the it's white tough. box on him. I got the white box on Josh. Um, <laughs> I did I, I thought it was no. It's flipping back and forth still. No, no. You gotta if you're in the in the chat, you gotta. Oh, is it still flipping back and forth? I think so. Oh no. Why is okay? Hold on, let me let me go to live because it should be yeah. It's on Josh Chris, but okay. inside the inside the chat inside the chat you have to click on him yourself. Uh, yeah. The more uh -oh. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Maranya Balconen says I got the Shinova signal. What's going on? Well, Maranya, uh -huh. this is what's going on. We got Josh Chris Hart doing <laughs> COVID work on the skunk girl. We got uh, Shinobi Raccoon working on some Shinobi stuff. We got trusty sidekick working on my character. 
We got Good Dog Press working on I Have No Idea. We got Comic Book Bob working on. Uh, so I'm going to highlight everybody right now. We're looking at the wonderful hands of uh, Comic Book Bob. He was once a young, uh, young hen model back in the day before he had that terrible accident. So now he's just an artist. <laughs> but you might have seen his hands on such commercials as Wendy's. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> so I, he's love, I, I love the greasy parts in the bottom of the box. There you go. And he's working on a skunk girl, uh, you know, in, in uh, honor of Mr. Good Dog Press and his book being out there. And um, next we have Good Dog Press, who is working on some stuff here as well. Looks like some, I don't know what that is, DC stuff. Looks <laughs> like he's working on some DC stuff. This is this. this Social justice warriors. Oh, he's making social justice warriors. That's awesome. He's using references from DC. Oh, I'm just looking at how they did it, and it's a play on right, right. Races. No, I'm like, mad, I ain't mad at it. It looks amazing. Yeah, I'm just looking at how, how they made their expressions. I never read the th darn thing. I picked this up in the dollar bin, so that's ah. Oh, that crisis of it. Oh, oh no, yeah. the crisis, dude. I was so angry with that series. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. You know, you know, and I, and I and I defended Tom King for a long time. <laughs> yeah, and then of course we just saw Josh, so we're gonna click on Shinobi. Shinobi is doing some colors on yeah. his character. You know, and so we got that Slick Jimmy. He's uh fighting with the fan and the cat. Yeah, but yeah, DC Roy needs yeah. to leave the crisis stories alone. We got Trusty Psychic working on uh, the Borinkanir. Uh, so let's see, show. Uh, beautiful <laughs> art writing. All right, cool. Uh, so, so I don't mean to be mean, like, but like Zach was all, I'm going to like turn a, a huge company out of, on doing like, a, you know, the things that are in public domain. And I was like, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Like three weeks ago, I don't really think he knows what he's talking about. And then today, uh, I listened into him again, and as as I thought, he didn't know what he was talking about. But so you know, that's how it goes. You know, you win some, you lose some. Zach has to make up his own fucking ideas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know that was that was completely that was completely out of left field, but I just thought it was funny. Not that everybody's uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I have no idea what he's talking about because I kind of I, I kind of tuned out of everything for a while because yeah, it's, just, it's getting first stupid. I, yeah. Well, here's here's the idea. It's like everybody like this is possible if you guys want to go and do like a public domain um, property, say like Sherlock Holmes or something like that. You can play around with it all you want. Um, nobody's gonna come. Arthur Conan Doyle's like uh, relatives aren't gonna come after you. Right. Um, but if you tried, and he had this idea that Superman and, and like all this stuff was going to come into public domain, I was like, uh, Yeah, that's going to be a lot harder to sell. And, yeah. and the thing is, is like now, like multinational corporations are like grab, you know, they, they own these IPs and they're going to like be pressuring, you know, governments and stuff. And like, however, you know, if you want to go in and try to do, say, like, um, John Carter of Mars, which is now over a hundred years old, and um, you know his estate has tried to trademark certain things, but they they can't do anything about say John Carter and Dejah Thoris, but you can't do anything like later in the books. And you can play around with those, and you can draw them, and nobody's going to say anything. And you might even be able to pen like a like, like pastiche or something, which is like basically a fanfic, uh, and and get away with it. But if you miss one step. They'll come oh, yeah. get you if you if you don't cover all your uh, eyes and cross your T's and make sure your commas are all in place. Burroughs Inc. will come and get your ass, and that's how it is with the, these uh, like 20th century properties. Somebody has a hold of them, and so you know. But I thought it was funny that he thought he could just jump into that and like throw all of his ideas out the window, and I was like, mm, okay. Sorry, yeah. I got I completely went off a, a, off on a tangent, but I thought it was interesting. So it's yeah. all right, man. You know, well, your input is always appreciated. You know, you're not you're not only just a cheesecake guy. You know, you have a brain, you have a mind, you have thoughts you need to express and share. 
<laughs> Thank you. Also, I appreciate that. Also, I, give me card You uh, you you got thoughts? Yeah, I he, have thoughts. A lot has, of thoughts. He has I, thoughts. I, put, I put them in a bath and I make money. It's uh, it's great. Money, Keep going. Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, you know, I'm oh, just saying. Oh, okay. You can't you can't get mad at the man. The guy the guy has a brain. You know, it's not all about cheesecake all the time. He's got ideas. Just just like 90 percent 10 percent is actually cognition among other things right 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 but you know i mean he does go kind of crazy on the wording when he wants to promote i have no idea what he said today <laughs> <laughs> just, right. just just a just a verbal diarrhea that's all it was. i was like what in the world man i thought i thought i was at the oj simpson trial like what the heck is going on <laughs> what, is all this, what is this diatrap this guy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's yeah. all good. It's all good. You know, I'm making it, very noisy. I, I don't understand. I was figured if I made light of it, you know, it, it might pick up a threat, but it didn't work. You know? No, I mean, I literally am one of those kids. I, I play football and I sang in the choir and I did other stuff and I was a comic book guy. But I'd sit in the library, kick up my feet, <laughs> and if I wasn't reading a book, because I read a lot of books. Um, I flip open a dictionary and start scanning for words I didn't know, and then I'd write them down and use them in a sentence, and then I'd, right. I'd cross reference them into like in the thesaurus to see if there are any things that were like similar or they work together, and then you know I'd like get quote books, and then then like rename or do like a quote with like different words. I mean, I'm just that's I'm goofy that way. So that's that's all good. Like I didn't understand a word you said. But I, I got the gist of it. Sexy girls in space. I mean, S sexy <laughs> girls in space. There you go. There you go. Sexy girls <laughs> in space. You ever, uh, you ever read that book? Um, uh, 100, oh, was it um, 150 words that everyone should uh, should know? Yes. Um, I, I think I have one that's actually 101,000 words. So yeah. everyone should know. And, and again, like there, what it is, you, you, you um, Increase your vocabulary, increase the ability to communicate, uh, and I mean, it doesn't right. you know always have to use like the the big words. There's actually big. There's a big word for big words. It's called ses sesquipedalian, which means big words. You know what? I, I speak almost three languages, <laughs> and I have 150 words in my vocabulary between all three. So, yeah. <laughs> well, at least you can speak three languages. Yeah. I can speak yeah. one language and about half all, half of the words are in my head. So yeah. there's a there there's a book I, I actually picked it up. It was a it was like it was a, like hundred and forty words that every writer should know. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I, I I read that thing and I thought my brain was gonna melt. Well I mean they're fun to have in there if you're gonna be a writer. If not, it's just you know to being passively, uh, you know, no fluent and everything, that's just fine. I mean, I, I, I could, I could learn French all day long and never learn all the like the minutia of French. I just would just be half assing it. Right. And I learned just enough to actually sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> French confuses the shit out of me though, because they're like every other Romance language, every other Latin-based language, like Spanish or. <laughs> Uh, like Italian, yes. even Romanian, like follows really simple rules, and then the French, for some fucking reason, come in and just go, "We're going to do everything different, and <laughs> nothing's going to make any sense compared to like everything else." Where like Italian, if you read Italian, if you want to you learn like the pretty much simple rules, you can read it. Like if you're like you're reading English, French, nah. Mm -mm. That's like, uh, was it uh, Robin Williams had that stand up? He says, "Why do we do it? Because we're French." <laughs> that's right, because we're French. Yeah. I think that's exactly why they did it. Yeah. They just Look said up. the alphabet, and we're like, gonna, no, we're going to do it this way. <laughs> Watch, I'm giving a cigarette to a baby. Exactly. <laughs> cigarette and some wine. Here you go, uh, baby. Have some cheese. Life, life is crap. Learn this. <laughs> <laughs> life is to be lived until you die. Just can't. Oh, man. What is that? What was that? What was I looking at? What's this? What's this character? The, the little ninja, um, uh, oh, Shinobi's. Yeah, Shinobi that raccoon. Picture. Yes. Ah, cute. It's uh, Niobe, correct? No, 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 no. no, no the Shinobi, Shinobi raccoon, the one, like the little ninja, 
ninja gal there yeah. Uh, yeah. for yeah. for so what someone was doing a, it was a niobe shinobi raccoon piece and that's why that stuck in my head yeah i i had also done that one and that was for the uh draw quartered fan edition what do you guys think about the the, the subject for tomorrow man for uh, four who what the subject for drawing quarter or quarter tomorrow is Thor. Thor, which one? Yeah. Jane Foster uh, or regular they, Thor? They just said Thor. It could be anything. So I was saying that somebody needs to do frog. I, I think somebody needs to do uh, needs to do Beta Red Bill. That's exactly yeah, that, what that, I was yeah. thinking. So that was that was another one that everyone said. Or Thunderstrike. They wanted. Yeah. yeah. They, I, I said I want to see someone do. I want to see someone do Beta Red Bill, and I want to see someone do Throg. No. Uh, I was just thinking that I was like, man, better Ray Bill would be awesome. Yeah. Right. And did you uh, when you guys uh did you guys see um Ragnarok? Yeah, I saw Ragnarok. I saw it. Did, did you notice Bill on the building? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought that was a little cool. Easter egg. I I thought that was cool. I was like, oh man, at least they at least they made a nod to him. I wish they had brought him in. He's like one oh, of my wait, favorite man. Thor characters. Who would have been good to bring in in, in the uh, Infinity? Infinity War uh, storyline, man, because he's a cosmic character. Yeah, but no, y'all get Jane Foster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what? We haven't, but we haven't seen for how many movies now? Yeah. Well, she said she didn't want to play the character anymore. She said she she hated the character and she didn't want to she didn't want to come back. But you know, well, you know, they, they offered fair, him a feminism. But they, but they they girl power power the money is what they did. <laughs> yeah. Money and girl. Yeah, just yeah, we'll money and girl power. Money. Yeah. Yeah. You know she's like about five foot one. She's like this teeny that, little stick of a girl. That's the thing that everyone's bringing up is like, how is she gonna play Thor? She's like five foot tall. You know they're gonna have to like force perspective everything. I said, I said they're gonna have to hire all the people that worked on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But um, you know the other thing that the thing that I always talked about that was so sad about that is like the idea of putting the hammer on a woman is actually an interesting idea. It's just the way they went about it and how badly they did yeah. Thor when they She's did it. not Thor. Well, it's just that I mean, you don't gotta cut the guy's balls off. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, because there have been other people that have had the hammer, you know, and and and, 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 and they were still they were still them. Yeah, like when Eric Masterson, which is when, when the guy who became Thunderstrike, that was one of my favorite runs on Thor. I've, yeah. been, I've been a Thor fan for yeah. a long time. He, yeah, he cut. Yeah, he just uh, kind of called himself Thor, but. Still upstairs, he was Eric Masterson. Yeah. Well, they actually they they kind of called him they called him Thor just because they didn't know what else to do. But right. let me ask you, know? you a question, right? And this is this is my this is my problem with this whole you know Jane Foster Thor. Is Thor a name or a mantle? Because I think yeah, Thor is the guy's name. That's the thing. Thor, that's he's always been the guy's name. That's the thing that made everybody so mad. Uh, th th Thor said. is his name. I think they should yeah. just call it the God or Goddess of Thunder. You know? Yeah. That would I mean, be yeah. the mantle. Well, here's right. the thing. Here's the thing. Being that I'm a huge Thor fan, there is actually an in continuity thing that they could have done to call her Thor. And it was, and the thing that really upsets me is the guy who wrote it is the same guy who came up with that lame friggin' it's a title crap. No, back Thor during the a... back during the siege storyline, Thor is uh, not a title. Thor is right. a guy's name. Right. Yeah. But back right. during back during the siege storyline, um. There was a there was a storyline that they did where um, Mjolnir got broken. Like, and for the first, usually in the past when Mjolnir was damaged, it was because of some kind of magical thing. Oh, this was so the first time. Yeah, this was. Wait, the somebody broke the hammer. Yeah, what happened was Loki actually went uh, used a spell to go back in time, and he snatched the, their grandfather Bor right before his death. And Bor is like Odin's father, so he's even more powerful than Odin. So he brings him into the future and he put an enchantment on him. So when he looked at Thor, he saw Thor as the monster he was fighting. So they fought and Bor hit Mjolnir so hard, he literally cracked it. And this is the first time that uh, Mjolnir was damaged by something that was just as powerful, if not more powerful than itself. Yeah. So to fix it, he went to Doctor Strange and they figured out a way to fix it. But to do it, he had to take a piece of Thor's soul and fuse it into Mjolnir. And he told him, this connects the two of you like you've never been connected before. And he says this line. He says, where goes Mjolnir goes Thor. Mm -hmm. So that basically that means that if Thor dies, Mjolnir will crumble. And if Mjolnir is destroyed, Thor will die. Wow. So when 
this whole thing happens, what they should have done, instead of like, like I said, instead of cutting his balls off, they should have had, you know, because because the uh, original sin was an awful storyline. It's not it's not all Jason Aaron's fault because he had to pick up where the original sin left off, and it was just a terrible storyline. He uh, what should have happened is is when when Thor can't pick up the hammer, everybody comes out and they're all consoling him, and then Sif walks up. She should just smack the crap out of him and said, "Listen." You're the god of thunder. You were the god of thunder before you picked up the hammer. You're going to be the god of thunder long after you wield it. All right. And he should have been like, you know what? You're right. I, if I want to be worthy again, I can't stay here. I got my the being worthy is out there. And he points to like space or right. something. Right. And then they, they have him do like a labor of Hercules kind of thing where he's going out. That would have been. That would have been great. Right. I agree. And then, yeah. Labors and then, of Hercules would have been awesome. Yeah. And then they ask him, he's like, well, wait a minute, what about what about Midgards? You know, you're supposed to be the guardian of Midgard. And you just have right. him say, whenever Mjolnir has needed a wielder, it has found one. And then they said, well, what do we call him? He says, and just have him repeat that line. Where goes Mjolnir, goes Thor. Call them Thor. Just like just like they called um, Eric Masterson Thor, even though they knew he really wasn't Thor. And then you've got unworthy Thor out in space doing his labors of Hercules thing. And you've got Jane Foster on Earth doing whatever she, whatever they're going to do with her. You don't have to reduce the original to lend legitimacy yeah. to the new. Well, I mean, yeah. we're talking a certain zeitgeist, though, where you have to tear down anything that's a white male or yeah. anything. Well, even if, even a black male. I mean, look what they've done to look what they've done to Luke Cage. I mean, Ugh. shit. Dude, they kill. I mean, they talk about wanting diversity and everything, and then they kill off James Rhodes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like that right yeah. there, or, or they ignore like all kinds of other pretty cool characters over yeah. the years, just ignore yeah. them. Yeah, look, or they, they look, put they, or they put Kate Pride in charge of the X Men of Storm, who has more experience leading. The problem, I mean, with, uh, can, uh, charge, the problem well, imagine like a great storyline using dust. All right, now yeah. I mean, you could do some really cool stuff if you wanted to get into the whole Muslim angle. You could. There are so many stories to be told with dust. Um, yeah, and Here, here's a question talking about like you know, there's like telling them you know, they should bring in original characters and stuff. Why has no one ever done Gilgamesh? This is yeah. true, I don't know. Like, I mean, the greatest and, like, you know, the, 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 the ancient, and he's like the uber ancient, uh, like he's before Hercules, he's before, yep. before Thor, he's the he's the uber ancient uh hero. So, I mean, yeah. that's a nice. great there's there's so much. There's so much there to do something with it with a character like that, and no one's ever touched it. Right. I mean, I you, you could even, sorry, you could even do oh. something like, uh, I mean, they have the Hyborian Age now, and they could bring Gilgamesh in, and maybe he's he even predates like our histories. You know, he's out of prehistory and into say the Hyborian Age, which yeah. would be something where you could do something really cool with that. Yeah. You know. Uh, Moranya brought up something interesting. They totally ignored Rhodey's niece, who used to repair his armor and create Mary Sue. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I, I remember them talking about that two years ago. Why didn't they use her? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. And whatever, oh, happened, and whatever happened to Monica Rambeau? Oh, dude. You don't, you don't want to get <laughs> just, people started on that. Just you know, uh, they, you know they're going to cast. That's they, what they they've do. cast? No. They've actually started casting for her. Yeah, she's going to be in the. Um, uh, which one is it? She's going to be in. I think she's going to be in the uh, the um, the Vision Wanda series, isn't she? Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't remember what the casting was for. To be honest yeah. with you, I just know that they're casting for her. Yeah. But, and the um, lady, um, the lady that they cast, that they cast. I don't know if she's going to get it or not. That she, she really looks the part. She looks good. Oh yeah, like like that was one of the bits of casting they did. I was like, this is actually really good. But, um, she really looks the part. One of the things that I thought was kind of sucked was uh, with the whole uh, Riri Williams thing. Is at the same time that Riri Williams' story was going on, they had um, Tony Ho, which is uh, the doctor who saved Tony Stark. Right, because even I was saying she did better. Yeah, and and they did her in. Um, she was in. Uh, was it the U.S. Avengers? Yeah, and it she her character was actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw her in U.S. Avengers, and I'm thinking, well, why did they go with Re why did they go with this uh un this despicable character in the form of Riri Williams when they had this character that could have been that would have been an ideal candidate for Iron Man since Tony wasn't available? 
Well, not only that, but Riryu could have... <laughs> one, the name is awful. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. Just Riryu, that's just an awful name. But um, that character could have been okay if they had not just suddenly shunted her in there. You know? What they should have done, like I said, I, I, and this is what I do with my brain. Um, I said what they should have done is that it should have been Tony running like an iron core from from the shadows, like like a Nova his, core. Yeah, well, like no, like a secret core. Like <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever read um the Dark Knight Returns? Oh yes, yes. Kind of, kind of like what Batman does at the end, where oh, not, like the Sons of Batman, right? Where he's not the where he's in the shadows. He's behind the scenes. Yeah, and he, and he just has like four or five people. Like you have Rhodey, you could have uh, Riri Williams, you could have Tony Ho. Yeah, um, like, you know. The, no. <clears throat> Hell, he couldn't have even done like Iron Man Incorporated. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But uh, you know, it's like I said, they, their thing is they got to tear down the original to lend legitimacy. Yeah. So I looked up uh, Rhodey's niece, Lila. That's her name. She's six one six, and she was a child prodigy who helped her uncle with any modification to his armor needed. Yeah, she was really why. Really why didn't they use her? Because they didn't want to uh, do that, they wanted to replace people. That's right. Mendes right. wanted to create his own character. Okay. So basically, they stripped this. They stripped Rhodey Deese's genius and and uh, slapped it right onto this uh, new character that nobody liked. Pretty well, much. so so I mean, the, here's her history. Like I'm just reading out the Marvel database. Lila Rose was a niece of James Rhodes, also known as Iron Patriot. She was a prodigy child to help her uncle with any modification to his armor. After a congressman was blackmailed into denouncing Rhodes, Lila recorded a video which went viral in which she defended her uncle. For it, she and Terrence were kidnapped by the same men who were targeting Rhodey. I mean, she's got a great backstory here that they totally could have used. And then when Rhodey died, come on. Yep. It's just, There's it's a new one right I mean, not just War Machine. She could have uh, been like, uh, like, why I, didn't they call it? She why didn't they call Iron her Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden. God yeah. damn it! Well, it's, a medieval torture device. Yeah, but Archie okay. Comics owns Iron Maiden. Well, yeah. oh, okay, screw that. I mean, you can but, come um, up with something. You know, I didn't. Iron, it, did, it did not make sense for them to put that armor on the Punisher. You're gonna give. A, you're gonna get. Like, don't get me wrong. I like the Punisher. You're gonna give that guy. One of the most powerful weapons in the entire world. Yeah, and, and a guy that kills a criminal. Yeah, you know, you don't think you, you don't think you're he's gonna be. You think you're gonna be able to control him? Well, yeah. so and, at, and that's just how this is how it ended. Block with that armor. This is how it ended. However, Terrence sacri- Okay, the villain who was controlling Rhodey's armor was defeated, and the murder prevented. However, Terrence sacrificed himself in the process, and Lila. Elila was present in Terrence's burial, where she talked to Tony Stark, who offered her, offered to train her, and her programming abilities. Why? What? Ah, this is, this is frustrating. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, I, I read that um, that War Machine run with with uh, the Punisher. Yeah, and Rhodey was at the end of that book. I know he was. That's because they resurrected him. Yeah, he was there. You know. He yeah, because they they did they did that story. In uh, Iron Man, when they brought Tony back, which, uh, God, they have taken... I don't know if you guys have read anything and what they're doing with it right now. It's awful. Um, I have not. It, it, the real Tony Stark is dead. This is just like... A, this is like Again? A clone. Yeah, this is like a clone. Um, but uh, he, uh, Tony, when he came back, he did the same thing to Rhodey. He brought Rhodey back the same way he brought himself back. So this isn't the real James Rhodes either. Oh, oh, those stupid clones! Yep. Okay. But uh, stupid they, clones and stupid, stupid barfed up portions of the cosmic and cube. God. Right. Yep. And what is it with what is it with Marvel and their jackal fetish? Uh, dude, yeah, I don't know, man. It's actually no, I do know what it is. It's basically an fu to the fans who were upset about the uh, one more day. They keep teasing, bringing bringing it back, and Dan Slot was really bad for that. Dan Slot just loved trolling people with that crap. So basically, what's going on in Nick Spencer's book is could possibly be him dangling the idea of Mary Jane and Peter Parker being back to, together 
over the fans' heads just to say, nope, <laughs> it's not yeah, going to happen. It's possible. But I don't think, honestly, though, I don't think Nick Spencer is is the troll that uh, Dan Slott is. Dan Slott enjoys that stuff. I think Nick Spencer is legitimately trying to do something, but whether or not he can... Is, okay, so basically his hand This hurt. last issue, though, was just horrendous. It was bad, yeah. But his but the thing was, is his first initial run when he took over the book was actually pretty good. Hmm. So he's, it's one of the, he's one of those guys, like I said, he's one of those guys that he's hit or miss. You know what I mean? Yeah, anybody who turns Cap into a Nazi, I don't trust him. Yeah. yeah. Then you see uh Endgame where, where they did a little nod to that when he was in the elevator and did that Hail Hydra thing. Right. You know, Even though I was like, really? Of all yeah. the <laughs> as clever as that was, I was not a fan of that moment. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, yeah, I get the con yeah, I get the context of the situation, but uh, at the same time it's like, really, you're gonna have him do that. And the whole and the whole reason for that was literally it, it was just like a little like huh, uh huh, uh huh. Remember this? Yeah, yeah. We, hated, we we remember we hated it. We hated it. <laughs> and then, yeah, it and in. even the Captain yeah, and the Captain America we have Bat now. That's still a figment of the uh, cosmic cube. Yeah, Nazi. Yeah. The real Cap is still sitting, is still rotting in the cell because, and as far as he's concerned, he's always been a Hydra agent. Yeah. yeah. So um, Rania says Reed's friend did make the suggestion to call Riri Iron Maiden. She also says the resurrected Rhodey back and gave him crippling PTSD for going. It, uh, for going into any form of Iron Man style armor, and Argus Creations wants to know what dimensions for a sketch card are. Anybody? I, I think it's uh, was it three and, a half, three and a half by four? Probably no. I can't remember. I used to have a bunch of them. So did I. They're the those Marvel cards were the thing that got me uh, collect the X Men books in the first place. Dude, oh, you know what? Hang on a sketch second. Card? Let me show you something. What you got? Two and a half by three and a half. There you go. Two and a half by three and a half, Argos. Let's see. So let me type that in just got in case. OG, got the OG card set here, man. Uh oh. Oh. Put, put it on the, comic book. Got the Jim Lee cards, man. The Jim Lee X Men '92. Yeah, those were the cars that I was collecting. Yep. These things, dude. I have I actually have. Um, they actually took these and they printed them in uh, comic book size form. There was they, they had like three three volumes. Mm -hmm. All these uh, at uh, um, eleven by uh, seven and a half by eleven. So I actually this one. The only reason this one's missing is because I um, I've got it out and it's sitting somewhere. But then there was uh, you guys remember these? Yeah. This was the '91 yeah. set, and this is the uh, there was about a dozen of these that Arthur Adams did the artwork for. Yeah, dude, I love these cards. Yeah, they're awesome. I just really got, I realized you guys are way bigger nerds than me. <laughs> dude, I got gotta the, start somewhere. I got the checklist, man. Dude, when you got a guy on the panel that's called Comic Book Bob. Yeah, do you, you really think that we're not gonna have some nerds on here? God, I'm I'm just I'm just a you know novice geek. Me I used too. to you know I, I I'm um, you know I okay. collected books, but I did. You guys have got all kinds of stuff, and they look really good. I read the shit out of my books; they're all like ragged. I bought yeah. I bought multiple copies just so I could take the covers off like this, just like so I have the art <laughs> in my hand. Look at these. Look, look at this. this I don't went that Jim far. Lee. This is back when Jim Lee was Jim freaking Lee, man. Yeah, he he went he went balls to the wall. Now he doesn't do that anymore. Yeah. He doesn't have to draw anymore. He's 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 actually no, well, he's actually I think he's his his anatomy and his compositions are actually a little bit better now. But he doesn't have a lot of the, the just finishes. like yeah, yeah, he just wanted he just wanted to go for it. And so like you know you, you can yeah. see some anatomy problems here and there, but it he's still a, had like this vibrance. Yeah. And then yeah, I don't know if he, he has uh, that anymore, even he's, though he's really good. I think the problem is that he his finishing is much. I think he kind of started trying to channel uh, Scott uh, and um, uh, Mark Silvestri a little too much because Mark Silvestri has that really rough, sketchy style. I love Me, Mark Silvestri. Him, him and Texera are the ones I yeah. really dug a lot. Um, uh. 
But uh, when you look at they look at the stuff he's done in like the last five years. It's got that rougher, sketchy feel to it, but it doesn't quite fit with the way he designs his pages and his anatomy. Uh, right. When he had like when he was doing those super hyper realistic detailed pencils, that's the style that fit really, really well with what he was doing. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, when he tries to go the sketchy route, it just looks it just looks almost like it's unfinished. And uh, yeah, dude, I remember like like uh, I've got that uh, first run he did after the original after the first um, Wildcats uh, miniseries, and he he did like a, a I think a, a twelve issue run on the on the uh, regular series. The penciling he did on that was so hyper detailed, like he was literally drawing the reflections on the buttons on the shirts. I mean, it was insane stuff, but it looked so good and it looked so polished. And then, uh, and then, like I said, just he just kind of somewhere along the way he just flipped. I think he saw how cool uh, Silvestri style looked, and he kind of wanted to imitate that. Right. And he's, and he's done that a couple times in the past. Like when he first started doing Death Blow, he was kind of trying to channel that uh, Frank Miller look. Yeah, and that's a totally different feel there. Oh yeah. I also yeah. loved Keon. Del Keon is another one I just. Best Hulk. His 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 Hulk is the best Hulk ever. Yeah, best Hulk artist ever, in my opinion. He just did, he actually just did a one shot with. Uh, well, I mean, Peter David. I mean, when he takes his, I mean, when he did Pit, Pit is my liter is literally my favorite, um, like image era character. Even though I think that he wasn't the greatest writer in the world, I just love the look of it. Yeah, it's the one. It's the one character that I would like go into debt to Keown to like get the license to just do something with it i just look, really i love look, that character i'm gonna tell you what a lot of these guys are starting to look at some of these properties they did and they're thinking about bringing them back like um um joe madura is is uh bringing back uh battle chasers he's gonna finish the original storyline that'd be nice i mean i know keon did like 20 issues of pit and it, it kind of petered out like i, I just think it, it had so long between its each issue that it got just weird and you know he went to his own imprint and uh you know i've got them all i've got every i've got everything that pit with pit was ever in yeah. that's where my geekery comes in i'm like seriously right yeah that's serious that, geek. that first that first issue and there's a lot of like uh a lot of the pros they even talk about it every once in a while just the the, the first way, ripping issue yeah that yeah, face that first issue of pit just had a feel to it and and mm. actually the paper stock that that's printed on it's not that hyper glossy stuff. It's 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 high quality paper. Yeah. It doesn't have that glossiness to it, and because it doesn't have that glossiness to it, it has this more of a it just has more of a rough feel to it. Mm -hmm. It felt it felt like a like a like a midway point between the old newsprint and the new and the new glossy paper. Yep. And it just added to that feel of that just like because he's he's so good at putting that raw power in there. Yeah, his his um he he's good at doing females all right, but his masculine characters, damn, they're just they're just badass as motherfucker. He's just a yeah. badass fucking dude. Yeah, he's uh I, and I uh, wish he'd come and do more. I really do. I know I know the why he doesn't he works in film and television, he does storyboards and concept art and all that stuff, but and I, I understand coming back to comics is like a step down in pay, but I miss him. Yeah, he, uh, he also had he ran into a, right. like some health problems or something too. Is what I understand. Yeah, there were there were some things that went wrong. Yeah, but uh, he's he actually did a um, like I said he did that uh, one shot that Hulk one shot that just came out with uh, Peter David, and uh, he kind of he said he kind of he kind of misses doing the comic book stuff. You know, so who knows, man? If uh, if more of these guys keep coming back doing their things, like Jim Lee even said on one of his, because uh, he does live streams on uh, Twitch. Yep. Uh, he said yeah, I remember him mentioning something like that. He kind of missed. Uh, he said he kind of missed the old uh, the old gang, and uh, right. you know, doing those old books. And he said he was like really. Uh, he was kind of a. Uh, he was kind of inspired by uh, Greg Capullo and Todd McFarlane hooking back up for Spawn Three Hundred. So, well, I mean, there, a lot of those guys still have um, true game. I mean, let's go. I mean, I, I always bring up Frazetta because I'm like a Frazetta geek too. But like game. that guy, that guy got a stroke and he still was painting with his left hand. I mean, yeah. and it still wasn't bad looking stuff. This, this is up until like, oh, about a year and a half before his death, he was still painting. Um, and so these guys, I mean, uh, I, 
the last time I checked, uh, um, Robert McGinnis, like 93 years old, he's still putting out a painting every now and again. I mean, that's that's an old dude sitting in, in, in front of an easel, for God's sakes. Well, that was, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was, but he was talking about how uh, it's, another, it's another artist who's like, he's like he's getting up there in years. And he says the reason why he keeps doing this stuff is that it keeps giving him a reason to keep going. You know, he's like, he's like, I've got, he said, I've got more, I've got more art in me. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, it's like, it's just, it's, it's what I do. It's who I am. But well, uh, I mean, there, there, there is truth to that. Like it, it, a lot of people who retire, um, like, you know, in retirement age, as opposed to like 45 or so, yeah. um, they often have died just a few years after that because they don't really have any purpose to doing things. And, you know, if they don't have family or something. Yeah, it just right. kind of and so if you keep working if you keep doing stuff if you keep believing that you that you're making a difference then yeah it, it you know your brain does a lot to keep you going you know yeah but then uh, like uh like you talk about frazetta did you ever have you ever heard uh ethan's frazetta story <laughs> no nope. did he i'm sure did he meet him he he met him but he didn't realize that it was he was he committed kind of a faux pas um Frazetta, I mean, considering you think about, I mean, considering this, I mean, he's Frank friggin' Frazetta. Yeah, know? he's the he's the godfather of like modern fantasy. Yeah, and uh, when he would go to conventions, he, Frazetta never signed anything because if he tried to sign something, it would create like a feeding frenzy. And Ethan didn't realize this, so and this was before the con even opened, and he went yeah. up. He asked him. He asked him to sign something, and Frazetta was like, like lost his crap. And uh, he sent. And Ethan's just like, uh, I don't understand. I don't understand. And he's like, no. And he's like, like Larry's like. And Ethan was like, no. I realize now. I was the a hole, but I didn't. I just didn't know. And then I guess uh, Frazetta's son came up and he says, "Do you realize what will happen if he tries to sign something for you and someone sees him doing it?" And uh, yeah. he's like, but there's nobody here. And he goes, it doesn't matter. He's like, every artist in here is like enamored with him. So I, I know this guy on Facebook, his name's Steve Ferris. And he was kind of in tight with, um, I can't remember, Doc. Like, Frazetta's good buddy, Doc. Um, and, and so you know, when Frazetta had his gallery there in Pennsylvania, and so they'd open it up every once in a while. And if you knew when to hit it right, if you were in with like somebody like Doc, then uh, you could be there when when Frank was opening up the, up the gallery, and then you could ask him for a you could ask him for a, an autograph and he'd sign it. Yeah. But uh, it's you know that's in a smaller venue where if you're at a con, it, yeah, that would just no. Oh, oh, dude, have you seen have you ever seen the feeding frenzy around people? Someone like Rob Liefeld or Jim Lee. Imagine well, that. I went. Well, well, I went yeah, I went like ten times bigger for friggin' Frank Rosetta. Yeah, Jim Lee showed up at a at a little comic shop here in Salt Lake, and uh, I, I I drove up. I'm up in the valley south of that, and I drove up and I got there late, and people were out the door, and so we stood out there. We we're waiting, at, and he was nice enough as he was leaving to go down to each one of the persons who was standing in the line, and I didn't have anything to have inside. I just wanted to shake his hand, and uh. He signed my he signed my flash hat, which is probably not the right thing, but I know I have a flash hat with his signature on it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's he's like he signed like napkins and all kinds of stuff for people. Yeah. He, he signed a dude's watch uh, at the last uh, San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He was like very cordial to everybody. He's like, "Thank you for coming out. It's nice, nice. I uh, think you know." And he just I went down the line. But the thing I noticed most about him, he's like five foot. He's like a tiny little guy. Dude, he's Mike. He's like Mike Miller sized. Yeah, he's teeny. He's a teeny little dude. Huh. Friggin', friggin' bite sized man. Should be in a tree making cookies. <laughs> but like, if you do ever meet him, you're, you're gonna if you're if you're over like five eight or something, you're gonna feel like you tower over him. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's it's it, it, you look at the. I'm seriously look look at the those guys compared to what's out in the in the field today. You can't compare it. It's like well, comparing. I, I don't think they give people time enough to be like them anymore. They push them so hard to, and then like they don't pay them enough. So what's the fucking point to be, yeah. to do the beauty that they did? I mean, it really, that I think that's the problem. I mean, but you get people. That, 
I think it's that and the fact that because they know that they're not going to get paid, they're not going to make any money off of it. They're not putting their best stuff out there. That's true. I, I mean, you look, they? you look at like the albums that comes out of Europe. Uh, those ones where the, a guy works on a, like a book. Um, right now, um, what's his name? He did uh, the Dark Prince Charming. Uh, it's Italian fella. Uh, uh, Batman the Dark Prince Charming. Yeah, but, Anyway, he's he does he did it in a, he did that that book uh, he did it in two volumes and then did it in a full volume and it basically is like a, a European album and he did it all in watercolors and then like penned it you know and it's just gorgeous it's a gorgeous book but they gave him like a full year to finish this book and he wrote it himself too so which is nice yeah um, oh is that, wait a minute is that the it's not Gabriel Delhoto God what's his name. Just a minute. I'll, I'll go figure it out. Give me a second. I can't remember. I know the one you're talking about now. It took me a minute to, to figure it out. But uh, no, and it's like, and I think a lot of like, like even writers don't put their best stuff out uh, when they're working for like uh, one of the big two or right. even like uh, another company because they're all thinking that uh, they want to, they want to try to find the next Walking Dead. You know, they want to find that next Lightning in a Bottle series. Yeah. Well, the Unbreathable Skull Girl is coming out on Indiegogo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey man we need to i, I want to push him man because i want to i want to get him to that five thousand that five thousand dollar uh stretch yes. goal me too his name is enrico marini that's his name yeah there you go yeah i think i he's i think i follow him on on uh yeah i follow him too i just couldn't remember his name for some reason i'm getting senior moment but on uh, instagram uh, yeah and, and well he's also on t twitter he's he's a nice guy he does uh some drawing you know like time lapse drawing and and uh He's working on another book of his own called Scorpion, and uh, it's you know again it's an album, and and you know he does it that way and it's just beautiful. He puts his he puts his pencils down, he puts his inks down, and then he does his watercolors to fill it in with the color, and uh, it's just got it's got a great style. I wish and again like we were talking like that, we wish that uh, they they allowed people the time, but no, I mean you you don't yeah. get I mean I think DC allows more time than Marvel does. Marvel's yeah looks like slapdash well, in my opinion part of the reason why i think dc does that is because one of their editors in chief is an actual artist you know that's yeah, that one might of, be the that's truth one the, that's one of the benefits of having jim lee as co-editor in chief unfortunately jim also seems to kind of just defer everything to dan to <laughs> so yeah in in direction he certainly does like in yeah. like where where everything's going and i i'm not i'm not liking what i'm seeing lately at least in content i think the art's great again i'm, I'm a big fan of like uh liam sharp i think liam sharp's work is Dude, just top notch right now i used to talk to him all the time um uh, yeah he, he, he's he's, he's very on, accessible yeah we hooked up on uh deviant art and i just started picking his brain and um i was telling him, I was like dude i don't know what you gotta do but you need to do a conan series he yeah. does. He does. He's done one of the best Conans I've ever seen outside of uh, Rosetta. Oh my god! And uh, like he's got this one that uh, they actually took. <laughs> they actually took the piece and they made a, a statue off of it. And uh, it's just yeah, Conan I know the one you're talking about. Or they just like leaning on a sword. It's so good, man. And then yep. he did that. Um, he did that. Uh, that Batman Wonder Woman series, uh, miniseries, where they went into like the. Uh, that felt like fantastic realm or whatever it was. That was like it was such an off the off the wall idea because it's Batman, mm -hmm. but it worked and it was so freaking cool. Yeah, I have that run. That's one of the better runs. And there's none of the uh, other, uh, you know, uh, political bullshit in it. None of it. It's just yeah. this cool story. This cool fa fantastical story. Yeah, the whole story takes place in uh, Tiernanog. Have you guys li been listening to the Blake Northcott and uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, streams lately? Yeah, I actually kind of fun. Yeah, I haven't caught it in a while, but um, hmm. but then I was talking to uh, Liam about uh, just like his process and everything, and it, it, it's it's amazing to me that he does work like that, but he's so fast. Right. You know, it's very detailed, and he is like, he's fairly quick. I mean, I. I I remember him saying something that it takes him like two, uh, uh, like two to two and a half days to do a full page completely yeah. rendered down. But and the way he, the way he, comp he, his composition on it is just like, yeah, it's it's perfect, man. I'm like, 
God dang. But he does. But I mean, he has that Frazetta feel. Yeah. Have you talked? Have you heard his, him talk about his like return to grace? I guess you know it took him a long time to get back in a position where they wanted him to do stuff and. Yeah, for, for like for like a ten year period, man, he couldn't even get him to return his calls sometimes. Right, and and it's not like he isn't good. They they, they just something, and he said, I don't know what caused it. He says, uh, but somebody took a, a dislike into me, and I, I couldn't get in. Someone, and I was, yeah, I'm sorry. So someone said that uh, part of it was because they kind of typecasted him because for a while he was doing like. Uh, he was doing that hardcore edgy stuff like Lobo and I think he did it and then like he did that Hulk run and then for some reason they just kind of they just kind of typecasted him in a way and they're like well this guy's no good for anything else people are stupid that I mean he's he's a talent that probably could do anything you threw at him oh he's proven that man like I said man like that 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 story like that Batman Wonder Woman story like that doesn't sound like it should make sense at all but it worked and it was freaking gorgeous he did write a book like an actual novel in in that 10 year period where he couldn't really get a foothold anywhere and he did a few other things i think that's why he got he got real uh he just like he was cool with talking to pretty much anybody because he's like well these people ain't gonna talk to me i'll I'll talk to the fans yeah and he did like i he he i emailed back and forth with him several times back in like 2003 or four no. And he was like emailing me back. That was before like full on social media. And we got on social media, and uh, you know I'm friends with him on on Facebook, and, and I don't go on Facebook too too much. But now now he remembered me when I got on Twitter, and I said, "Oh, you remember me?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, how you doing, man?" Like so. That's what's cool. that? Good guy. He's doing something right now. What is he doing right now? I can't remember. Uh, he's doing uh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern. That's right. And it that was. That was, I'll be, I'll admit, that was one of the things I went, really? You're going to do Green Lantern? But then I looked at it, I was like, holy crap, this is freaking awesome. It looks, it looks really good. Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, Morrison's writing on it. I haven't picked it up yet, but his writing on that has been like, as they said, it's like the best Green Lantern they've had in like years. Yeah. So Uh, Argo says the book was called Goth, huge bulky monster character, helped with his transition to Man Thing and then Hulk. And uh, Trusty mm-hmm. Sidekick dipped out. He didn't want to. He didn't want to interrupt the flow. So good night, Trusty. Right. Sorry about catch that. you next time. What? Well, he's just gonna, gonna say goodbye. Now. We're nerding out. I'm sorry. I know. I can't never get freaking comic book buff to shut up when he starts talking about stuff. I just, yeah. man, it's these are my people, man. <laughs> gotcha. You're my people. Like this, my you, know, people. You, know how, you know how starved I am to talk to someone who actually likes the same stuff I do. I know, I know, I know. Like I said, it's all good, man. That's what this channel is all about, bro. Mark talking geek yes. stuff, you know, chilling out. I didn't want to interrupt the flow either, but you know, good night to Trusty. Hope he's doing well. Yeah, you know, you know, hope he gets some good rest. I, I was checking out uh, comic yeah. book is still drawing tales. Uh, good dog is still drawing his um, Justice Warden is out there. Shinobi is done drawing, and Josh is putting in well, final colors I, on. Uh, adding the, I'm adding the finishing touches on a few other things, and I had to uh, unshare it in order to do that. Right, right, right. Josh is putting the finishes, finishing touches to the unbreathable skunk girl. Uh, he did. Pablo Romero art is in the house. He's saying, uh, "Hello, this is uh, this is uh, Pablo Romero art. You can find me on <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter." Uh, YouTube, uh, MSN, and of course on the chats, trolling people. And uh, now that we said hi to Pablo, y'all can go back to nerding out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys on uh, all these uh, old school comic books things that you never heard of. Oh, well, right. some yes, some no. You know, and uh, I, I'm I'm like uh, I'm a little you know I'm I'm like uh, uh, Slick Jimmy. I have my moments when my memory is right. not all that great. I uh, hear you. And uh, that's that's due to the advancement of age, even though I found out I'm younger than him. But still, uh, a lot of shots to the head, a lot of shots to the head. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, shots a lot head. of shots to the head, and you boxing? Yeah, I used to. <laughs> oh, Speaking that, that explains it. Did you watch, uh, <laughs> any of those, those uh, the MMA fights over the last couple of weeks? I did not. I did. I, 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 I splurged to, to get the Manny Pacquiao fight, and then that was all I could splurge on. So I haven't been catching up on anything else. I, I wanted to see uh, the Thurman Pacquiao fight, and Pacquiao looked 
pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, for his age, man. Uh, but I, but I gotta wonder, man. Is it? Is he, is he gonna do what a lot of fighters do? Is he gonna take it too long, or? I think he has one more fight in him. I don't think he should fight anybody that's young. Like uh, I don't think he should fight uh, Spence uh, or, or any of those guys. I think Thurman was tailor made for him. That's why he chose him. And um, and even and even so, Thurman came came back in the later rounds. And yeah. that's I what know. I was wondering because I didn't I didn't watch the whole fight. I saw the uh, the highlights, but everyone was saying that uh, it's it's it either either Thurman Thurman found found his uh found his second wind or Manny just started kind of gassing and there was no I, I think what happened is Thurman hit Manny said it at the end Thurman hits really really hard and Thurman does hit hard and Thurman rocked Manny a couple of times. Yeah. And um but Manny just out sheer out wheeled him. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's Manny. He's Manny. He did that. Um yeah. I just I don't like it. I don't like watching these fighters uh Take it. I, th I think he it. wants to do one more fight, one more payday. The thing with Manny is, he gives a lot of his money away to charity. I mean, he. No. I, have you ever seen some of the documentaries he's on? He he yeah. does. He goes. He people are standing outside his door, and as he's trying to get to his car, he's just giving min money out to these people. Well, that, that's like uh. Well, that's like what, what happened with Ber 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 Roberto Duran. You know, he, yeah. he he gave a bunch of money away, and then he ended up. You know, he didn't have a whole, whole lot left. <laughs> no, I would I mean, think I, not. I, I'm not mad at, at people that you know want to help people out and give. Like, yeah, if you want to be generous, if you want to be generous, go for it. Yeah, but uh, I, it's something I always say, man. You can't fill from an empty cup. Yeah, True. and that's why he's still fighting because I think uh, Freddy Roach said it. Manny gives too much money away, so he needs to fight. We need a Manny versus Manny fight, says Paulo Romero, and he says he's on ICQ as well. Wow, I haven't heard of ICQ in such a long time. ICQ, right. wait a minute. Keep a little, keep a little something for yourself there, Manny. Yeah, but uh, that's like like when they had, they had that uh, that Chuck Liddell. Uh, um, oh, man, Tito, Tito Ortiz! Ortiz. Oh, my God, that, that that hurt my soul, man. That was bad. Oh, he got. It's just I'm, I'm like Chuck. You gotta hang it up, man. You gotta hang it up. That dude was my freaking hero back in the day. That guy used to be. I mean. And that's the way it is, man. He used to be able to wade through shots, man. Just he had a head like a brick. Yeah, but mm. that that takes a toll. But man, I mean, he's got he's at that point now where his body's like, you know, hey, if you get even touched, we're turning the lights off. And uh, right, it's, it's 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 I understand that that fighters will, you know, like a fighter fights. Mm -hmm. But man, at some point you got to start listening because Father Time is undefeated, man. Yeah, and right. I think, like I said, I think Manny has one more fight. I think after this fight, whoever he decides to fight, um, he should just go ahead and. And I know he loves boxing, but I think I know why he loves it because he needs the money. He needs to quit. He's trying to bring Mayweather out because that would be the biggest payday yeah. ever. He wants Mayweather, to fight him again. Mayweather is yeah. not fight him again, man. Mayweather, May yeah, Mayweather got nothing to prove. Yeah, well, Mayweather's uh, he's uh, he's focused on uh, starting his own promotion, so. Yeah, I mean, and he's a billionaire. Why is he? Why would he want to? Why would he want to tempt fate? Yeah, smart but, move on his part. But uh, yeah, it's it's like uh, I I hate watching fighters like, and I, and I understand it, but I hate watching them go go beyond. Yeah, yeah. the fact that he left that he lasted as long as he did is it's a tribute to his work ethic. But wow, yeah, well, God, dude, he's what uh, forty. He's 40 years old, dude. And most fighters stop in the what, like mid 30s? Yeah. Because some just, sooner. Yeah, some sooner because they just can't take it anymore. But um, yeah, I just uh man, that that that, that Chuck Liddell fight, that that hurt my soul, man. And yeah. he, he and it's just, just did you did you see the way he got when he went down? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a pretty fight. Oh, and an okay. MMA, you know, I mean, the only the only MMA bout that I was semi interested in was the Amanda Nunez and Holly Holmes fight. But then, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, Holly Holmes should not fight again because she hasn't looked good since she beat Ronda Rousey. No, uh, and she, Amanda Nunez uh, ain't no doggone joke, dude. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what, man. Pound for pound, I think Amanda Nunez is one of the the ten best fighters in the UFC. I, I agree. 
I mean, she, the way she, the way she freaking murks Cyborg. Yeah. Oh, they oh. want to do the rematch. Cyborg oh. wants the rematch. Oh, I'm sure she does. <laughs> it's man. She she everyone and I'm 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 included in that. I thought this was it was gonna be a freaking slugfest. Hmm. I thought because Cyborg's power is just crazy. Who's that cute little one that was uh, doing pretty good fair for a while? She's quite pretty. Oh, but um. Then, um, Rose Namunis. Yeah, Namunis. Yeah, she. Uh, I, I'm. I don't want her to fight anymore. I don't want her to bust up that face. <laughs> she first showed up. People thought she was a ring girl. Yeah, she looked. She was cute as hell, man. And then she, she, you know, she shaved her hair off and then looked a little, little, little more butch. But I mean, I'm gonna tell you something right now, though. She's legit, man. No, no, she's a great fighter. I'm not. I'm not dissing her at all. She, she's a small little package of dynamite. I just don't want her to mess that face up, and that's what'll happen. But uh, yeah, like she, uh, like everyone was telling her, is like she made the she made the cardinal, uh, she committed the cardinal sin. She challenged the Brazilian fighter for the title in Brazil. Yeah, just and no, that, that's not smart. Yeah, and every there's only been one fight ever happened like that that the that the champ walked out with the belt, and that was Ronda Rousey back in the day when the. It just wasn't as competitive as it is now. Yeah, and uh, every every single time, no matter who the champion is, be the best fighter in the world, man, if they go into the, they go into Brazil against the Brazilian, they ain't walking out with that belt. Yeah, well, and R Rousey never really worked on her on her you know her stand up at all. So yeah. that coach I mean, that she had, that what what was his name? That dude is that dude is the worst stand up guy. Yeah. But I looked at his training. I was like, "Are you serious right now? This dude knows zero about boxing, zero every, about hands." I was like, "This dude is trash." Every I could have done a better single, job training her. Every single fighter and every single trainer told her that for years. They said, "If you don't go out and find yourself a real striker, real striking coach, someone's gonna freaking tear your head off because you're a one-dimensional fighter." And she sucks. she she had this idea in her head that she, she she had to show loyalty because his gym was the only gym that would actually take her back in the day. And but the thing was is if you look into the history of it, he didn't want to take her. He he did it because he want he needed the money. But the whole her mother actually like talked to her. Her mother was begging her to leave that guy. She's like, he doesn't care about you. He's just trading on your name. Every fighter that came to him because of Rousey's success, he ruined that fighter's career. And they just constantly were telling her, you need to leave, you need to leave. And she just wouldn't listen. And she got her head freaking, she got, she didn't get beat. She got beat up. Well, I mean, the next two, I mean, when she was went through Holly Holm, just she saw the flaw and took advantage of it. And then, yep. hmm. And then she fought. Who did she fought, fought the next time and just got Amanda their ass Nunez. kicked? Oh, Amanda Nunez. Amanda, Amanda Nunez. Her, yes. Okay. She got her head kicked in. And I mean, and she, it, it was bound to happen. I mean, I used to watch her and I'm like, she doesn't do ground and pound. She doesn't do Muay Thai. She doesn't do nope. boxing. She does submissions and that's it. And I used to watch her. I'm like, I mean, it's going to yeah. come one of these days. And, and it did. And it came, it came hard. Dude, everyone said, if, if she gets you on the ground, mm -hmm. she's got you. Because she is a submissions expert, but right. if, if you stand her up and you cut the ring off, because she has—that's the other thing too. Her footwork was awful. Yeah, she had, she had no ring presence at all. She just charging straight ahead, and I'm surprised that the, the, the when she fought uh, when she fought uh, Amanda Nunez, I'm surprised Nunez didn't do to her what uh, uh, what's his name did to. Um, Ben Askren just recently. <laughs> that was so funny. Dude. Wow. Popped a knee right into his gourd and knocked him out in five seconds. Fastest knockout in UFC history. Would have been faster if the referee was was a little bit younger. Yeah, actually, <laughs> said that the, it actually was more like two. 2.5 <laughs> seconds. Of <laughs> two, 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 two and a half seconds to get over there. Man, I'll tell you what. And I'll tell you what, man. Askren the amount of crap talking he was doing, he deserved that, man. I mean, I get it. I understand it's a it's a ring persona, and I think he understands it too. Because uh, when he he tweeted out after afterwards, he was like, "Yeah, that sucked." <laughs> yeah, but, he, said, uh, he said it sucked, and he probably deserved it. Yep. And then, uh, but uh, um, then uh, what's his name? I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. Um, 
but he uh he said that man he said this ain't over as if i see him in the if i see him in the grocery store i'm taking his head off yeah his best best papitas or something like that he's uh it's a cuban guy yeah um i thought it was hilarious i was i was so look yeah i told my brother you know i said dude that dude is overrated and my brother's no he's the real deal he's the real deal i said no 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 that dude is overrated that dude is way overrated no he's for real he's for real i said nah He's overrated. Uh, yeah, he won, but but uh, like it wasn't convincing wins, hmm. you know. Asker and I, th- I, I, I do have to disagree with you a little bit on that. I do think that he is a very good fighter. I think he gets in his own freaking way, though. And uh, wow. I, and I do think that the level of competition that he's used to is a little, little light because he fought in uh, Bellator first. Yeah. They but, did the uh, trade. I remember they did the trade yeah. to bring him to the UFC. See, this is what I don't like about UFC, uh, not UFC, MMA. And I and I get they're trying to get away from the corruption of boxing. I, I understand. I understand. I get that. But my thing with, with uh, MMA, MMA is a sport. UFC is a brand. Bellator is a brand, right? right? right, right. They need to get a unification body, yeah. right? And... You can still have your UFC heavyweight title, whatever. It could, it'll be kind of like the WBA, WBO, mm-hmm. WBC titles, right? You can still have your USC title. You can still have your Bellator title, right? But let the, let these people fight each other. That's why that's why boxers make so much more money, you know, because they can cross, they can fight whomever and promote whomever. But if you're in UFC, you got to fight the roster in UFC. It's kind of like the mm-hmm. WWE, you know. You, you can only fight what's there, and uh, and and I think until until they figure out a way to cross pollinate these uh these bodies and allow you know and I get it UFC does bring the best product I don't disagree with that, right? But that's, uh, but, that's but how could point. you be a real world champion if you don't fight everybody? Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. uh that's kind of what uh, Mayweather's trying to do. He wants to do a uh, combination boxing, MMA, um brand but he wants to do like the, like you like you just said like the cross the cross uh, promo, uh, cross promotion stuff you have like, to. Like, like like let's have a real world champion right you have to i mean i get it and, I, and i'm not mad i'm not mad at what they're trying to do and i get the boxing is one of the most corrupt sports in the world because of the way it's done but how can you say you are the world heavyweight champion if you haven't fought everybody yeah. like the belt you know, champion and the, right and the, the, uh, right. the champion. Yeah. Um, and, that's, and, and then that's when the real money will flow in. That's when people start getting paid. Now I get it. They, they can't self-promote and UFC is going to take a cut like they did with Conor McGregor when he fought Mayweather. Yeah. UFC got paid off of that too. Oh, yeah. I still think Mayweather carried McGregor, but you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Like I said, man, I think May- Mayweather went into that fight. He was fighting at about a six and uh and uh, after Connor, Connor touched him a couple times. It wasn't enough to like really hurt him. But he's like, okay, yeah, you, you can you can reach me. But let's see what happens if I crank this up to nine. And then he just schooled the crap out of him. Well, I mean, it, McGregor stepped in to with one of the best that's ever been in the ring. Yeah. I mean, best the, defensive the, fighter. Ever, yeah, right? the, the, the best defensive fighter ever, and the I mean, least dangerous and, fighter ever too. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you look at Mayweather, I mean, his face and the rest of his, you know, it, it, the proof is in his face. His face is not like normal boxers, especially punchers, yeah. you know. Um, but, I mean, I have to say this, you know, if they'd had an equal fight, say, if Mayweather had stepped in and gone into an MMA fight, oh, he would have been gone. He would have been gone quickly. Oh, well, yeah, that's... but, but the, here's the thing, right? You say that, and I say, okay, McGregor weighs the same as Canelo Alvarez. Put him in the ring with Canelo. I think sure. yeah. ten Canelo. second fight. Canelo, you th- yeah, you think? Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, <laughs> I gave Connor. I gave Connor a puncher's chance against me. Okay. I, if all the if all the cosmic tumblers clicked into place, and he landed that one punch, he did. He landed that one punch in the first round. Uh, but if but the thing is, Mayweather. I would give a better chance in an MMA fight than I would give uh, Connor in a boxing match, because no, well, yeah, sure, okay, but I mean, we're t- again, we're talking Mayweather. May- 
nobody's ever beat the guy for God's sakes. Yeah. No, but that that's why I always tell people, I said, look, Mayweather took it way easy on McGregor. Mayweather took it super easy on McGregor. And McGregor's lucky that Mayweather has any issues and he doesn't hit as hard as he used to. But again, I say put the put put him against Triple G. Put him against Canelo. <laughs> because that's what McGregor is at that weight class, right? Because boxing and, and, and UFC, MMA weight classes are different. Yeah. Like a welterweight for UFC is like 170 or something like that. And a welterweight for boxing is 142. Yeah. So 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 that means that Canelo would be more on the natural body weight. And again, I say, Mayweather, I, to me, Mayweather took it easy on him, carrying him, whatever. Whatever, you, you may disagree. You know, and I think he took I, a big I, shot. I, I, dis, I disagree. If you put somebody in, uh, uh, you put a boxer in with an elite um, MMA fighter, um, unless he, you know, takes him out really quick. Uh, if he wears him out, if he gets him down on the ground, he is fucking toast. Yeah, yeah, that's that's no. on MMA. Yeah. I'm I'm talking about boxing. Right. Yeah. Boxing, boxing would never transition. Will never be a successful transition to MMA. Um, His fighting style is too ingrained in the stand up game. Um, I think he's. I think uh, he would do better than a than an MMA fighter going to boxing. I don't think so. I don't think so. It um, depends on. I would depend on on the MMA fighter. If the MMA, MMA fighter had really fast hands, yeah. that's now he's not going to be elite. But I still no. Think I, I, and again, like better. I, I remember hearing like stats on you know how how fat, how many punches could be um, delivered like by Sugar Ray Leonard, and it was like ten punches in a second when he really got going. You know. Yeah. I mean, like. And, and Muhammad Ali was doing somewhere like seven to eight, you know, at a heavyweight size, and landing them flush at that speed and with a lot of power. Uh, and, and guys like Frazier and um, um and Ho I'm not Holmes, uh, fucking the big guy. God damn it! What's his fucking name? George. Foreman. George Foreman. I mean, George Foreman was it, right. his hands were like hams, and he and it, they weren't, you know, he wasn't slow either, especially when he was, when he was young. Yeah. I mean, these guys, if, if they were just to stand up with any of those guys in MMA, they would knock the fuck out of those oh, yeah, guys. Stand-up game is, yeah, it's definitely, if it's only stand-up game, but, I mean, you got to think about kicks and all that stuff, and boxers are not meant to yeah. be trained to deal with that, you know, that, right. that's not in their mind, you know, their they're, they're whole thing is what it is, it's right. just... It's just hands, you know, hands, that's, hands, and hands. And we got three minutes before the nine o'clock, and I turned into a pumpkin. And it's been a very, <laughs> very for wonderful conversation thus far. But <laughs> let me go ahead and start out throwing people. <laughs> We're going to start with Comic Book Bob. Sir, tell us where you could be found and what you're working on, if anything. Uh, well, I'm going to finish up this uh, Skunk Girl piece. Um, I've also got a uh, that battle made a knuckle bomb piece. I got to finish up. You can find me uh, at Comic Book Bob on Twitter, on D Live, on Twitch, on uh, and of course on YouTube. Uh, we do a live stream uh, news show every Tuesday. I'm also on uh, Chester Busby's uh, Book Bear Basement every Tuesday at uh, eight o'clock to ten o'clock. And then uh, you can also find me here every every time I can get in here. And uh, I appreciate you letting me on here. Let me ramble, brother. No problem, man. Like I said, you know, it, it's always good to have some some talkative people here and there, man. So everybody's always welcome, you know. Uh, it's a no big deal on that. Um, Mr. Joshua Christopher Arts. Uh, yeah, I'm Josh Chris Art. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all at Josh Chris Art. Thank you, sir. Uh, Shinobi Raccoon. Okay. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh Instagram, all of it is Shinobi Raccoon. I'm putting the finishing touches on this here short story for uh, to add on to what's going on with Unbelievable Skunk Girl. And thanks for having me on. And you can find me here on the ball pen. Thank you, sir. Slick Jimmy. Uh, my, my name is Slick Jimmy. You can find me at Slick Jimmy Speaks on uh, the YouTubes and the Slick Jimmy Love on Twitter. Uh, go check out my um, comic book on Indiegogo, currently in demand. Little Girl Lethal, not for kids, for adults, uh, but it has beautiful art. Uh, my friend Whiskey Paint from Vladivostok, Russia, is uh, is my partner in crime there. We have a, a great book, very very dark and gritty, noir, uh, super sexy, ultra-violent. If you like that stuff, a story about vengeance, it's for you. Amazing. Sounds awesome. 
And of course, the man of uh, the man of the hour, Mr. Good Dog Press. I don't think I was a man of the hour. I was very quiet there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. Uh, but I do want to show you guys what Iron Maiden looks like. You guys were talking about a character, Iron Maiden. That's Iron Maiden. But yeah. Yeah. So you can't use that. Shut up. Um, that, that's yeah. not right. They should just change the name of it somehow. Spell so it different. I, anyways, yes. Uh, please go yeah, to the girlfriend so. Skunk Girl. She is... She's still going to campaign. It says only one day left, but really, it's going to go on for another 31 days. I'm going to yeah. react tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, that way you, you're supposed to hit a matrix. You know, that, that's why you do it 30 days, 30 days. But I've been saying that from the beginning. It's going to be a 30, a 60 day campaign. Uh, what you see on my desk right now, that's the going to be part of the book. This is a, a part of the SJWs, the, the Super Justice Wardens. So they're gonna come up with their plan how they're gonna take down Skunk Girl. So it's kind of a take a rip on the the heroes in crisis. Cool. So thank Many. you for having me here, and you can get me on Good Dog Press Monday and Friday nights at 10 p.m. and on in, on on Twitter Good Dog Press and Instagram the Breathable Skunk Girl. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. Uh, no problem, man. And uh, sorry, sorry that that we we got onto those long tangents. But you know, comic book Bob is not doesn't doesn't go out much. And uh, so <laughs> the few times he's the few times he's allowed out, you know, he he takes advantage of it. So uh, have they let him out for good behavior? Does, does he have a, Is he low jacked? Yes, yeah. he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> Chester don't let him talk on his show. I got another, I got another idea for another set of villains for you, Manny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A high impact vigilantes. Uh oh, HIV. No. Oh boy. Anyway. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, no, I, I bring up the second uh, villain for the uh, second issue will be Owlfire. Anyway, uh, this is Eortiz. Uh, you can find me at colorblind underscore e on Twitter. You can find me at Eortiz Arts on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, this is my channel Eortiz. But we try to, you know, do some nerd talk and some drawing and. Uh, Sometimes not in that order, but we do the best that we can. Don't forget to check out Slick Jimmy tomorrow. He has a uh, cheesecake challenge. So shameless plug for the man over there. Uh, my namesake. And I uh, hope everybody has a good evening. God bless and good night. Aloha. Good night. Bye-bye.